Hey everyone, Brendan Wall here with GameItAll.com, another edition of Film Talk. I uh, just want to mention our sponsor right off the bat, HostGator. HostGator is a leading provider of shared, resold VPS and dedicated hosting solutions. Uh, their award-winning support is available 24-7 via phone, email, and live chat. You can discover why over 9 million websites trust HostGator and sign up for a new hosting package using the coupon code GAMEITALL and receive 25% off your first hosting plan. With that being said, I we'll welcome my guest today, Joey Wartner Cheney. Uh, director slash writer of the movie DK, which uh, has a very interesting plot. So I'll let you go ahead and describe the plot of that movie first. Great. It's um, I really would say it's it's a lonely story. It's it's a story about um, a man and and his place in the world and and kind of a refiguring that out. It, it's a love story at, at heart, but with some some maybe horror elements to it. <laughs> a few. Yeah. <laughs> um. And I want to ask you as well, right off the bat, I just I'm going to go backwards a bit, but before I do, I want to mention, because it says at the beginning, based on a true story, so this was a thing that happened somewhere? Yeah, actually in Detroit, there's, um, there was a, a story that someone had told me about, and um, the, the real story gets far more graphic than, than what we dive into, but, but after the person had told me about it, I, it just it really stuck with me about imagining what the scenario would have to be um, for, for this whole scenario, everything to happen. And so that's kind of where I started working backwards with the character. And while it's certainly inspired by a true story and the actual events that happen, all of the, the story backstory with the character and, and his quirks and everything are, are our own. Okay, so it's kind of like, it was definitely like an inspiration to kind of get you going exactly. on the script. Very much so. And uh, so, the, so the real story is that uh, this guy found... Or killed someone, right? Killed a woman. Yeah, and 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 he and she he ended up keeping her around for a month, and so um, he basically would bury her uh, uh, during the day, and then when the neighborhood would go to bed, he would exhume her and and have a relationship with this body. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> and so it also became really fascinating to me to think about uh, because I'm easily grossed out and and just thinking about this decaying body. And what what mental state he would have to be in to start, you know, to keep being able to see through it, and and how that would affect him, and it, it naturally kind of followed a, a I think maybe a storyline of a relationship, albeit a pessimistic view of a relationship, but but you know where everything's very rosy at the start, and then if you notice, we we definitely go through some some very specific things. Yes, <laughs> uh, and that's interesting. That you said you're normally a bit squeamish because this movie is. Uh... There's there's some there's some nasty things in it. It's I wouldn't say I wouldn't say it's over the top gory or anything, but the 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 body looks pretty pretty nice and raunchy as the movie as the movie progresses. Yeah, our, our effects team was incredible, and and they did such an amazing job with it. But but because I am a kind of squeamish guy, I I love horror movies, but but I'm I'm squeamish when it comes to slasher. I like them, but I, I shield my eyes a lot, and so. It really, for me, it became what's important for for story elements, and um, and yeah, there's one specific scene in the bathtub scene, if if you've seen it, and and that became this really delicate dance of how do we tell the story about where he is and what's happening, and how do we also remind you of what's actually really what happening in that scene. <laughs> and yeah, I do remember that one in particular because at, at, at first I was thinking. That's not how that works, but then it's, it's <laughs> I caught on quickly. Yeah. <laughs> um, so let's talk a little bit about your background. Uh, what, what kind of, like, how did you get started? What, what made you kind of interested in becoming a filmmaker in the first place? When I was in middle school, I was really lucky. I, I worked at a magic shop at the time, and it was kind of my first job, and I was working behind the counter, and um, a props person came in, the Perry Mason show, the movie of the week, not when it was a regular, but movie of the week they used to shoot in Denver, where I lived at the time. And a props person came in, and they were doing some special on a, a bunch of magic. And so um, they wanted to to rent and borrow a lot of the magic, but the shop owner didn't want it to go out without him, and he had to stay at the shop. And so I kind of wheeled and dealed and, and made a, an agreement with the, the own shop owner that I would go out with the stuff to make sure it's okay, and then I made sure the props person would let me come around to the next two movie of the weeks to film with them as kind of in a PA in the props department. And so... It was pretty fun. In middle school, I got to, to be on a big set and kind of see how it all went down. And, and it was an exciting environment to be in uh, around all of that stuff. 
And then from that, I kind of naturally, I, I went over to special effects. There's an amazing special effects house in, um, in Denver. And so I worked for them for a little while. And then um, with some friends, we had done some movie stuff and just kind of ran the gamut. I used to direct some TV commercials back in the day. And, and then, um, then I kind of transferred over to live. And I started doing a lot, a lot of live stuff. On, we did some stuff on Broadway and so a lot of stuff off Broadway. And now I'm kind of making that transition back to, to film again. So a little all over the place, <laughs> kind of okay. wherever the interests are going. It's it, it's really interesting because I I really expected a lot of like horror because this this a lot of independent filmmakers that make a horror film that's a lot of what they make. You sure. know what I mean? Like they usually stick to that genre. So it's kind of it, it's kind of unique that you come from like Broadway and like uh, special effects. Like I noticed, I was looking through some of your credits and uh, I noticed you worked on movies like The Italian Job and stuff like that. Um, a spider cam? Can you explain what that is? Yeah, it's. Um, I had some friends that that had developed this um, really exciting um, cable con controlled camera rig, and it um, basically there there were two friends. There were was one set that would would do all the rigging and this incredible stuff with this camera, and then another friend that was really smart with computer programming. They um, they kind of met, and then um, starting on Stuart Little Two <laughs> was the first movie, and they um, they combined it and they started having very specific operations. Um, so all my friends are the really talented ones. I always had the no skill, would just kind of hang out on set and, <laughs> and learn as much as I could, soak everything up. But but yeah, it allowed me the opportunity to be on some really big stuff and kind of be watched behind the camera on, on above the line stuff. And so that was really fun, really fun for me. Yeah, no, that was cool. That, that's cool. I looked at that. I, I was like, spider camera. That sounds cool, but I don't I have any idea what it is. <laughs> yeah, it's basically um, what they would do is they put different step and direction motors on the top of different buildings, for example, on like Spider-Man and come down to a camera package and then precisely control the camera to be able to fly through space or, you know, in whatever direction in a pre-programmed movement. It's pretty cool. That would ex yeah, no, that would that would explain it. I, I think it was it, it was funny because I it was like Charlie's Angels, Italian Job, and then the other one I saw was Blue Collar Comedy Tour yeah. Rides again, which is <laughs> which is really funny. Yeah. It was like it went with a theme and then just completely changed. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, a little bit of what we also I kind of did with tried to do with this movie too. Being such a huge fan of Broadway, a lot of the guys I brought in. Um, Jackie Hoffman's a really big name on Broadway, but maybe not so much in the independent horror realm. Same thing with Lisa Howard. She just did this amazing show on Broadway with David Hyde Pierce and got all this acclaim, and, um, but not so much, again, in the indie horror realm. So it's kind of fun to bring these theatrical people over into this kind of gritty little um, genre market that's really exciting. I, I think that they did such a great job. And yeah, and it's interesting, too, because you're taking people from uh, Broadway, which is, I think, in general... You have to be a little bit more broad and like act like you know big, right? Sure. Where in this little horror, in this little horror film, uh, it's a lot more subtle, and they pull it off really well. But I think that's really interesting that they're going from one extreme to the other. Absolutely, Jackie has done a lot of TV and a lot of movies, and and so and we're lucky to have her. She kind of knows the range, and and Lisa's just in incredible too. But yeah, it was kind of fun to kind of play with that a little bit and even with Jackie's character it's a, to take a couple takes a little bit more extreme and we have a lot of montages in this movie to try to show a lot of passage of time so it was fun to play with different different sizes and levels of things <laughs> with them yeah and just the different ways she was saying like essentially the same lines was really funny too <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah that became another really interesting thing I mean since there isn't a lot of, of dialogue in this movie and it's effectively a one character one location place I mean there's a few supporting but how, how do we tell this story uh, without dialogue and without, you know, another character to, to have it off of? And so it really became about a lot of these same, the same music and the same kind of routines and finding ways that by the, it may be kind of funny and, and cute and charming, the, the song he plays at dinner for the first couple times. But then it slowly becomes a little bit more pathetic and we slow the song down a little bit. So just make it feel a little bit more lonely and all these little subtle ways that hopefully we do it. And it's the same thing with like, Jackie delivering her lines. Okay, so we were talking about earlier how it was uh, based on this uh, true story that you heard yeah. about the uh, the man who found or who killed this woman and brought her into his home. Um, did you have any kind of idea what you wanted to do before you had heard about that? Or did you... I, I'm a huge lover of horror movies. It, it's my favorite. So it's definitely the genre that I, I like to be in. This movie, I don't think, is squarely in horror, and I think it 
it, when we were exploring it originally, early drafts were very horror driven and lots of cliches, but, um, but it became more of a character study. And so I think that, you know, the, the, all the projects that I'm exploring next are all horror related, which I'm excited about, and they're a little more straightforward. Okay. And uh, so the the lead actor uh, Rob Rob Zabrecki, yeah, right? He's a that he pronounced it. Okay, yeah, uh, he's a he's a like I was listening to a thing. Uh, I think you guys have a Vimeo channel, or you have a Vimeo channel. Um, and there was an there was a thing with Jackie Hoffman talking about the movie real briefly, and she mentioned Rob Zabrecki looking kind of like a young Norman Bates, yep. and that's like I I went back and saw watched like that part of the movie again, and that's spot on. That's exactly what he reminds me of. Uh, was that was that in your head at all while you were filming it? It wasn't. Um, well, yeah, it wasn't when we were casting. But then when he, he arrived and we were doing um, Wardrobe, it, it definitely. And that became another thing that Rob Rob's definitely his, his own thing. And I think that he has all this amazing inspiration from all these other places. And, and Norman Bates is definitely one. But we, we didn't want it to be so spot on. And so with Wardrobe, too, with him, it, it became this delicate dance of, of nods, but without actually being there, you know, being spot on with it. But. Yeah, he, he is absolutely incredible. We were so lucky to get him. I, I um, have a bit of a history in, in magic, and so does he. He's this very famous magician in that world. And so I've known of him for a very long time. And, and so we were, I, I was just over the moon to get him. Because when he, he got there, we, we talked shop and magic when we need to not talk about horror for a while. And it was great. So he's a, he was a magician before he became an actor, or at the same time? Um, so he used to be in Possum Dixon, um, the front man of Possum Dick, Dixon. And then I think right from there he went into to magic and and then um, acting. So oh, wow. he's kind of run the gamut and is very successful in everything he does. <laughs> um, okay, so another thing I wanted to... Uh... To, I was wondering about because this movie obviously you see the the body starts to get in different stages of decay as the movie goes on. Oh, it's like the title. <laughs> um, and I was just wondering about the research about that. How did you go about researching like you know what stage, how many days would a body look like this, or how many weeks? Uh, what was the process there? It um, I to for the at the script stage I would just call a mortuary and. There was somebody who was very kind to me that said, as long as you never use me by name, I'll just answer any question for you. <laughs> and, and it was pretty great. He, he gave me all sorts of insight and, and actually some surprising information about, that, um, about the temperatures that a body would have to be at to slow down the decay and, and how rigor mortis would set in and how you would have to, to break rigor mortis, but then it wouldn't come back. And so it was all, all very fascinating. So that was all kind of done over the phone. Then when we actually reached production stage or pre-pro, um, the, the special effects guys did a lot of visual and me being the Swedish boy, I, I said, I'll definitely be engaged in those conversations, but bring it the relevant stuff. Cause I just, I'll, it'll never leave me if I go through pages and pages and pages of stuff <laughs> looking for the right stuff. But they, they like, so we had a lot of reference photos of, of real, real life cadavers in the, in the um, special effects room. And, and they, they tracked the whole thing and had these very specific appliances. And that, that actually became one of the interesting things during production, too, is that um, because there really wasn't a lot of characters to shoot at the same time, it really was Rob and the decaying body. And she, we had to track her, her um, you know, decay over a certain amount of time that she would have to go back into makeup to get into the next stage and then come back. And, and so we wouldn't want to wait, but we wouldn't want to do a second setup. And so that became a really interesting dance uh, on set as well yeah that, that's I, I never even thought about that but yeah you'd have to either do the makeup again or move to another location or yeah and then um, back again and so it was uh, specifically that we were at the dinner table that was that I, I had never thought about that either until we started scheduling it and it was it was tricky because if we by the time we moved everything back out of that room then she would be ready for the next setup and so it was this really interesting thing that we ended up on um, we shot a lot on um, on um, the Red Dragon, but we had a red one around, and we would go get a lot of close-ups on, on the, the red one. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> and, and something that people, like, some people may not uh, re realize, but the actress playing uh, the dead girl, mm -hmm. uh, that's incredibly hard to do. <laughs> she just, she's, she's still, I mean, they're, I don't want to say anything, but she's basically still for the for the whole movie. Yeah, and I, I, 
I don't know how. <laughs> yeah, she's the one that deserves the most credit because I think that she's the easiest over to be overlooked. That she would, um, she had these contacts in her eyes, so she couldn't see anything. She had to be helped out. And I remember there was one time we had broken for lunch, and we and I looked back, and everyone was gone, but she was still strapped in the chair because you know everyone, <laughs> everyone had forgotten that she can't see for herself to get up. And and but she was so patient, and she was really friendly, and. And like, yeah, she spent hours and hours in, in makeup, specifically the, the bathtub scene, not giving away a whole lot. But there's um, there were layers of makeup that she had to endure. So um, she had to have beauty makeup that wouldn't wash away. And then there had to be um, a certain slime and slush that was specifically de developed by our special effects guy. And then horror makeup on top of that. And all of those could, could, had to be waterproof, but also had to be able to be pulled away with leaving the beauty makeup. And so it just took hours and hours and hours of of her being in the makeup chair. And we did that twice, unfortunately for her. <laughs> and did you work with, did you work with real bugs? Uh, no, I don't know real, real bugs. There weren't any real bugs? Oh, real bugs. I'm sorry. I thought you meant a company called real bugs. Yes. Oh, no, 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 sorry. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I, I want to learn about it. No, um, yeah, we, um, we had mealworms and, and we, we had a, a prosthetic head for her for a cockroach scene. And, um, and to her credit, she wanted to do it herself. She um, she didn't feel like it, it looked real enough, and and so yeah, she she endured six takes of that. <laughs> it was, yeah, it, it was intense. Now, how do you? Now, I know I've heard a little bit about using like, oh, animals, insects on like sets like this. Uh, on on bigger film shoots, it's like they they have they have like a wrangler or like an insect kind of owner i guess <laughs> yeah uh, did you have something like that where you had to like be very careful with the insects and put like keep them preserved all the time and we did yeah we had um uh one of the special effects guys w would handle all of that and he would would take care of all of it yeah it was it was and his room was crazy <laughs> <laughs> see that there that's that's when the, you were talking about being squeamish that's probably where i would back off and <laughs> yeah. do everything <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, and that that was also, I mean, me too, because it, I, it's so gross. But like, going back to that bathtub scene, and again, not, not wanting to reveal a lot, but but like, it really also having bugs in in the water and everything. It, it trying to find ways of kind of making that beautiful in its own poetic sort of way. That's not just immediately, <laughs> I don't know, gag worthy. It, it it really was. There were many, many, many cuts of that <laughs> of that scene. <laughs> And, uh, oh yeah, I wanted to, um, the flashback scene, you have flashback scenes in the movie going back to, uh, it looks like it's supposed to take place around like the 60s, 70s, yeah, yeah. I'm guessing. Um, I noticed the color, the coloring you use for those scenes is really cool. Cause like you, ch you change the whole look of the movie. Um, even not even seeing the costumes, you would think it was a different era. Uh, and the, yeah, like, no, like in the costuming too, in the set design, like I, it's, it, Looked pretty impressive for like a low budget movie. You must have had some good costume designers and like set designers on set. So so lucky. Yeah, it, we were a little to no budget movie, so we didn't have a lot. But I, I'm very fortunate that I know some really in incredible people that were kind enough to come out. Mike Hewling did the production design, and he's just the best. I've worked with him on on touring shows. Um, him and I did a thing in New York together, and and he does a lot of theatrical stuff. And so for this movie, really wanting to kind of I have a phrase of operatic sizes, which I really like. You know, that's not not so subtle, but but um, but bigger and something we could do in, in theater. He really he understood that, and and he brought ideas to the table that I would have never thought of. And yeah, his his work is incredible. If you ever look him up, he builds these contraptions and does these artwork installations and and builds scenery, and and he's just the best. The same thing with the customer; she was amazing. And then. Um, the DP and I, who the DP is spectacular as well, of course, and we really discussed that we're in the same house and how do we really establish um, a flashback looking different and it really, it did become about color palette and we wanted to burn it in with filters and do it practically and not have, do it in color and post and um, and so that, that was, we went through a lot of different filter choices and to decide exactly what it would be, but when looking at the the house, since the house ha doesn't change, and that's an important part, of, I think, story-wise. But it could get really boring vis visually, so it really became about using the filters and all that sort of thing. 
Yeah, and like some of them, they're not they're not straightforward. Like they come out of nowhere sometimes, right? So I mean, it's it's helpful that you included that. I saw a movie recently where it, it looked basically the same, and it was really hard to keep track of where you were in the movie. So that's a definitely a color palette is a big help. That's good to hear. <laughs> yeah, that's really good to hear. Yeah. Um, it'd be kind of weird if he was just like, I remember the day my mother said this yeah. <laughs> every time, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So you talked. You you mentioned a couple things, but did anything, uh, any like funny, crazy things happen on set that you were kind of not expecting? There were all sorts of kind of weird things that that would happen, and um, and it, because you are such a, a small family on such a, a small movie, you know, everyone just becomes family. And Rob, just being the incredible guy he is, he wanted to be closer to his character. So towards the end of the shoot, he moved out of his hotel and moved into the the set the set house and. And so, because he was there, we all decided we wanted to hang out there late, and then being Colorado, we got snowed in a couple nights, and so we would all just be at the same house and see each other in the morning after sleeping next to all this kind of weird, like, bodies and prosthetics and animals, and yeah, it was, it was, it was pretty crazy. It was pretty fun. Okay, so you filmed it in Colorado. How long was the shoot? It was 21 days, I believe, or maybe 21 and 24, I can't remember, but it was really, really short. We have yeah. really long days, over ten hour days. Yeah. <laughs> that's 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 the life. <laughs> yeah, it sure is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and to and to the credit I think the the of the production designing team, just thinking about kind of the house now, thinking about some of the stories that I think that they really they went all in, which was great. And since we, we actually had a house that, that we rented for a month to do this. They moved all the appliances out, and they bought old-looking appliances. They moved all the the older appliances in. They um, put like um, paper on the on the cab cabinets, you know, like old wrapping paper and wallpaper, and and they um, they built some um, walls that I don't know if you noticed, kind of by the front door. There there are um, all these banisters, kind of like floor to ceiling, that added all this amazing movement when you did deli shots, but they were all removable, and so they they did a lot of amazing work on it. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of work put into uh, when you when you got a when you got a small budget, there, you could still do a lot because there's lots of practical stuff you could do. That's exactly it. <laughs> That's exactly it. And that proves right there too, like the effect of practical effects. I don't know what your thoughts are on like practical versus CGI, but I'm all practical. I um, we yeah. we unfortunately did a couple VFX shots in this. Um, the guy who did it, I think, is amazing, and and i mean, we're so lucky that he did him for us. But um. But they were kind of forced on me a little bit <laughs> that that we didn't we didn't weren't able to get the the practical one and I would choose practical any day over over yes yeah. I mean like a good example uh, last year Mad Max came out almost I think it was if not a hundred percent it was very close to a hundred percent practical effects which is insane yeah so, I mean oh I remember I was there opening day for that <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely All right. yeah you can you can totally tell. <laughs> Um, so, uh, do you have any, uh, anything you're working on right now you want to plug? Any future projects there's, you're working There's away some at? stuff coming up. I, um, I can't talk about any of it, unfortunately. We're just okay. a little early, but, um, but the next, um, hopefully the next movie stuff is coming along pretty well and pretty exciting. Working on, um, uh, hopefully a Broadway-bound thing right now that's pretty exciting as well. But hopefully, look for it in the next couple months. <laughs> Very incognito. Yeah, <laughs> sadly, not to sound douchey. <laughs> no, 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 it's all good. Um, so, Decay is available on VOD, mm -hmm. right? It is. And where? And what? Uh, what platforms can you purchase it from? You know, um, I, I don't know 100 percent the platforms. Um, I know our distributor, who's amazing, and we really gelled with, and they and they've done such an amazing job. Um, they've said that it's available via DVD and it's coming to uh, select theaters on uh, April 8th. Select theaters, uh, do you know wh around where that is? I don't, unfortunately. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Is there a website uh, for the film? Um, uh, there is. Uh, I suspect if you go to Uncorked, um, uh, that they would have the information there. Uncorked Entertainment? Yeah, Uncorked Entertainment. And, mm -hmm. um, and I know that they, I think it's a June a DVD uh, release. Oh, so it's coming out on DVD it as is, well? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it's in June. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for for doing the interview. Uh, good luck in the further promotion of your movie and your secret projects. Right. Thank you <laughs> so much.